What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So heading into Nintendo's next generation device, a lot of discussion has been around the first party games that Nintendo themselves will produce. But of course there's the whole other side of things with third parties and now it appears Nintendo's made a very interesting move maybe to bolster the lineup there. We're gonna go over that though here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth as we had quite a bit of controversy and discussion over the weekend when it came to sales based on some recent comments from analysts. And then we're also gonna be talking about Discord and how it appears that Nintendo Switch emulation is once again on the ropes with one seemingly just being finished. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button, helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members of the channel do get news wave early and ad free. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're gonna start today with Lawbreakers. Yeah, I didn't expect that one, but believe it or not, people are playing it again. And this is largely thanks to private servers. And in fact, Cliffy B himself, you can see over on X, pointed it out, saying somehow Lawbreakers is coming back. You see below, if you're interested in the, the this weekend's public test or future test, join the Rel Bla uh, Discord server to learn how to set up and keep up with the current news. Yeah, Lawbreakers, the 2017 game, it was around for like a year, Boss Key Productions, it just didn't catch on as sort of this hero shooter, but it seems like it's kind of backed out. On their FAQ, on that Discord, they say this is a project to bring back the game Lawbreakers. It's done by creating fake servers that the original game client uses. You can join by downloading the launcher, patching your game, and playing like normal. Now this seems to specifically be for the PC version, but still interesting stuff to see a revival for Lawbreakers. If you wanna read more about this, I'll link to uh, actually an article and a full write-up over on PC Games, where they went through all the different things around jumping into this game, and I guess what some of the plans are for that Discord going forward. But yeah, if you were hoping to jump back into Lawbreakers, you can do so in some of these future tests. Also, we know that EA Motive is working on Iron Man and the next Battlefield. And in fact, it looks like we're getting some more information around this new Iron Man game through way of different job listings. Like, for example, this was posted up. This is over on Geekin' Out, where they noticed Motive Studios is looking for a senior technical artist to help oversee the rendering related aspects of an open world action adventure AAA title, a, a double down on this in the qualifications, open world experience is a plus. So I, the Iron Man game is gonna be interesting for Motive to do. Not that I, I don't think they, they like, I feel like they can pull it off, but people have wondered how will this feel that different from Anthem? Because some did look at Anthem like, oh, it's kind of like an, an Iron Man style game, right? You get the suit of armor and you fly around in a large world, but, the source material for Iron Man clearly is more popular than Anthem. And as long as EA Motive doesn't fall into some of the traps when it comes to the live service offerings with something like an Iron Man game, I think they can make it work even as like an open world game that I, I guess might kind of reflect, think of Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2, that sort of thing, where you have a large city or open world area and maybe you have different points to go and do and, and accomplish things and get experience, level up. I think if they just stick with that sort of formula as their first title, I feel like it'd be pretty interesting, but I guess we'll see at some point. It still feels like we're a couple of years off from this one coming out. Oh, and with the popularity of the Fallout series that released on Amazon Prime Video, it appears many people are now going back to the games and pretty much any of them. I mean, seriously, you could look at like Fallout 4, Fallout 76, believe it or not, has jumped quite a bit, but Fallout 4 in particular, this is over on Steam DB that tracks the, the player count at any time on Steam. And you can see it's more than quadrupled actually over the last couple of days with that series releasing. And you have to go back almost all the way to launch to see a current player, concurrent player count this high in the last 24 hours, peaking over 83,000 players. And that's kind of the idea of doing these different series, even going to a streaming platform like Amazon. I mean, if it's good and people really enjoy it, they might discover the franchise for the first time and these, these different series or movies can 
tap into the mainstream and maybe bring them in to your franchise in video games. And I will say, Fallout is fairly accessible. It's on multiple different platforms. It's on Game Pass. It's right there on PC. And with that new update, it'll be Steam Deck verified even here in a couple of weeks. So yeah, definitely looks like they figured it out here with the series and the games are certainly benefiting with more people discovering them. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo and their big AAA third-party games that, I mean, did impress us quite a bit throughout this Switch generation. And I think the impossible port, quote unquote, was more impactful before we had things like the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally. These PC handhelds that are playing games that even the Switch isn't playing right now, like an Elden Ring, has kind of taken some of the, uh, the excitement away from like a Witcher 3 being revealed or Doom or Wolf Inside. Those were some impressive things when they were shown. But still, third-party games is something Nintendo does want to focus on going into their next-generation device alongside of their big first-party staples, whether it's a Mario, a Zelda, Splatoon, Animal Crossing, and so on there. However, it does appear that Nintendo has made an interesting move here with a recent hire. We can see this posted up over on Gamatsu, where they say Gio Corsi, the former head of commercial at Iron Galaxy Studios, chief product officer of Ilphonic, and head of global second party games at Sony Interactive Entertainment, has joined Nintendo of America as part of its AAA third party games portfolio management team he announced. In fact, this was over on their X account saying, this week I began my new gig filled with fun and adventure. I've joined the Nintendo of America AAA third party portfolio management crew to help great teams bring their amazing games to this legendary platform. Now this obviously a great addition for Nintendo just based on their their really their background here, especially at some like Sony Interactive Entertainment. And I do think going into this next generation system from Nintendo, many third parties are gonna be more interested in jumping on board sooner rather than later, just based on what happened with the Switch. I mean, think about what Nintendo was coming off of with the Wii U, and it's not shocking that many third parties were kind of gonna, gonna wait a bit, see how things go with this system because the Wii U, there were many third parties that jumped on early after how successful the Wii was and probably got burnt as they went through development and released like two years into the generation for the Wii U when the system was, I mean, not doing well is putting it lightly. But here, I mean, it seems like even if the next system comes out for Nintendo and it doesn't sell as well as the, uh, the current Switch, it still most likely would cross 100 million units unless Nintendo is something very, very weird. And that would be completely uh, worthwhile for a third party to show up. Now, I, I am curious if we can get back to having one of those impactful, impossible ports again. I'm kind of envisioning a few, like Dragon's Dogma 2, just based on how it runs with the Steam Deck, would be impressive if they got it on Nintendo's next system that ran at, hey, stable 25 frames per I mean, we see how it runs right now on PS5 and Xbox series, not exactly lighting up that frame rate chart, but really the one that would make me kind of step back and go, okay, wow, this is, this is pretty impressive would be GTA six. I mean, that would be, that would definitely make a lot of headlines if they were able to show something like that off, but I guess we'll see in time. This is a hiring that probably won't have any visible effects for a couple of years since if they're going to be making deals and partnerships with third parties for big AAA games, it'll probably be a couple of years for those to actually come to market through development and the process that we see now with these games taking years and years, but certainly uh, a good addition for Nintendo going into next generation with these third party relations. Next up, let's talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth as we had some information get out there around the sales. Now we don't have exact sales numbers. There have been some estimates that are thrown around just based on tracking daily active users and just coming up with a ballpark number for how many have sold. The, the fact that Square Enix has not told us yet though, that might be telling on its own. However, Daniel Ahmed did have an exchange on X where he kind of compared it to Final Fantasy VII Remake when their launch aligned. And it's not exactly painting a great picture right now for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when it comes to its sales. This posted up, we can see over on X, where they say, not to be that guy, but Rebirth is underperforming sales-wise. 
Not that sales performance is related to what the, the guy said, but goes on to say it's selling about half of what Remake sold in the same time frame, and looks like it'll have a weaker tail prior to any PlayStation Plus like release. And when asked about their sourcing, how do you know this? Daniel Metz simply said, Equities research reports who are getting the data from the usual tracker. So in terms of sales, you can think of NPD as an example. Of course, in the UK, they track all the different sales numbers there. They don't necessarily share them unless you pay a certain amount of money. I'm thinking like Circana, for example, where they will provide reports, but it's all under NDA and they'll just give us placements and some rough estimates and data when it comes to percentages. But... In this case, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth coming in at half of what Remake sold when it came out is actually not that surprising to me anyway. Now, I I would like to see Rebirth do better than Remake in terms of sales because that would show, obviously, a growing audience around this franchise that's now being remade in a three-part uh, outing, and that is already questionable on its own based on a lot of the discussion I've seen online, especially over the last couple of days where some were saying, you know, after Remake... I kind of checked out the story, the direction, it's just not doing it for me. I would have preferred for this to just have been one game, one remake, and then they just move on from there, which, hey, if that's what you want, I have a feeling that's what Final Fantasy IX is very much going to be. So at least uh, we'll see how those would compare one outing versus splitting it up and trying to do multiple different uh, versions of the game, really. And I guess trying to get more in depth with characters areas and at times just kind of padding things out to make it work. That said, if you look at some of the factors, it being a PlayStation 5 exclusive currently, it's not really helping things. And Final Fantasy VII Remake did come out with and was selling throughout the pandemic when a lot of people were at home, probably buying more games than they would have normally. So it is a weird comparison. And we already talked about how it was going to be weird for these game companies to make comparisons back to that time period. And I think Nintendo is going to go through this, by the way, when Animal Crossing comes out again, like the next Animal Crossing, that is not going to be a very favorable comparison for them because I, I don't think the next Animal Crossing is going to do those kind of numbers again. But still, it it's hard to push back on people who are saying, I, I don't like where this is going. So I skipped out on Rebirth, which is kind of a shame because I actually really enjoy the game. I'm about 85 hours in, I've already beaten it, and I'm just doing some of the side quests and things off, obviously in the world that you can kind of go off the beaten path and, and complete, and the battle simulator. There is a lot to this game, and I would like to see more people play it, and it also makes me wonder about the third game and how that's gonna do. Well, technically Rebirth is going to be heading to PC at some point based on what we saw with Remake, and then the third game, Apparently, according to Square, is going to try to get out there by 20, end of 2027. So we're about three years off from that happening, but I I guess we'll see as we go along what kind of sales tail that this thing can have, and maybe it can have a bit of a boost with the PC release and end up coming a bit closer to remake when it's all said and done. Next up, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch and emulation. As we know, Nintendo went head to head with Yuzu in the courts, and it was a very quick open and shut situation where they ended up settling like days later, and at this time, Yuzu, it seems like Citra, everything has kind of just gone away, and Nintendo owns the URL and a couple million dollars from the, the people behind Yuzu. Well, now it appears that a few others are actually going through some issues of their own, with Discord even shutting down their own Discord servers around these different emulators, banning accounts of the main developers, and it also appears that Suyu might just be outright done like it's over for it let's let's take a look this is posted up by the verge who noticed this and then also got a response from discord uh, where they say discord has shut down the discord servers for the nintendo switch emulators suyu and sudachi and has completely disabled their their lead developers accounts and the company isn't answering our questions about why it went that far. Quote, Discord responds to and complies with all legal and valid Digital Millennium Copyright Act or DMCA requests. In this instance, there was also a court ordered injunction for the takedown of these materials and we took action in a manner consistent with the court order. They go on to say developers of Suyu and Sudachi only received vague messages about how they were sharing content that allegedly violates intellectual property rights according to images shared with The Verge. And on top of this, Mr. Sujano over on Twitter shared this about Suyu. 
This is the founder and owner of the Suyu Emulator Project speaking. After careful consideration, I have decided to put the development of this project in freeze. Reasons are as follows. We simply do not have the capabilities to maintain the code anymore, and as most of the devs have left this project, understandably so. And two, legal risks. Our Discord was forced to shut down due to a court order, not just a simple DMCA. This changes the situation a lot, and I'm no longer willing to bear the risk of getting sued. Hey, despite the name of this project, well, that's ironic. I... I mean, the whole name of the project, Suyu, was obviously them poking at Nintendo over and over and over again. There were interviews done for some reason bringing more attention to it. And if you look on, like, their subreddit and places where this is being discussed by people who were, like, actually developing and working on this emulator, there's word going around that there might just be Yuzu code. Yes, it's technically a fork of it, but that Yuzu did have... Some instances of using parts of the Nintendo's SDK in it. That's something that they're still kind of going back and forth on. But the idea of sharing, for example, decrypting these different games and then using, obviously, the ROMs on Suyu, Nintendo seems to be playing that card quite a bit right now and actually successfully so. And I feel like Discord just doesn't want any part of it. Like, okay, well, we're, what, what is it? What do we gain out of this? Not much. What could we lose out of this? Quite a bit. So now we're just going to shut all that down and just kind of move on because Discord, yeah, it goes a bit further than just being a place to talk about Suyu and Sudachi. Now, it appears that Suyu releases are still happening on like their GitHub, and I'm not really sure who exactly is even behind it anymore. So I would look at Suyu as uh, be, maybe be a bit careful about some of the releases going forward and uh who knows with sudachi but i guess still ryu jinx is alive and rolling and that might become like the default switch emulator until nintendo decides to look a bit more at that and maybe just get annoyed one day we'll see and in our last bit of news let's take a look at a gadget that allows you to use your game boy advance system as a controller and I guess we'll go over some of the reasoning why you'd want to do that here in a second. Let's take a look. This is posted up over on X, a nice little video demonstrating it with just a classic Game Boy Advance system. Uh, they say, introducing the GBA Bluetooth TX cart, you can play on your Switch and other devices using and, and, and Game Boy Advance, like the actual handheld there, sports any device that works with the Zero Two. You register, you can register your interest on the shop. However, due to the complexity to make, it's a bit pricey. Now, this is shared by Inside Gadgets and. I mean, it's kind of cool. Hey, look, you can sync your Game Boy Advance up to the, the your Switch Lite and it will work fine as a controller, even though it's fairly limited as a controller with the number of buttons that it has. But hey, if, if you want to play Game Boy Advance or Game Boy games on NSO, you can, you can do it with a Game Boy Advance system. As for how pricey it is, if you go over to the website, yeah, it's $89. Uh, well... I'm not really sure. I'm trying to figure out why you would you would buy this other than or even make it. The reason I, I can figure out why you might make it right, because projects at times it's the process of doing it and just basically I'm doing it because I can. And that's kind of it. That's actually why a lot of these portables, I would say, exist where they'll take a Nintendo 64, cut it down in terms of the motherboard, do all kinds of wiring. And then you jam this massive cartridge in the back of it and you get two hours of battery life. It comes down to the project and the journey was most of the experience. It was fun. But in this case, I just, I don't really know why you would use necessarily the Game Boy Advance as a controller for another portable system. Unless you really just, that's just the experience you want to have and that's perfectly fine. Just remember, it, it it's not exactly cheap to do it. But hey, pretty cool in concept and I guess actually see it working in a video, but I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be picking one of these up anytime soon. And before we go to the comments of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, did you pick up Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? Explain why or why not in the comments. Okay, 66% say no, 34% say yes. And I saw both ends of the, uh, ends of the spectrum, right? People saying, I, I pre-ordered it immediately. I love what happened in Remake. I wanted to see the story continue and, so I picked it up right away. Others saying, I don't like what happened. I decided not to pick it up and I, I don't really care what happens even in the third one. Okay, and then some are just like, I'm waiting for it to go on sale or I'm waiting for it to come to PC or maybe it'll come to Xbox someday because I, I just don't have a PS5. 
that's there's a lot of limiting factors there when it comes to the reach of this game just from sales perspective with the, the PS5 itself. Sure, it is limited because more PS5s has to sell, technically for more people to pick this one up. And the PS4 at the time just had more systems on the market. But I don't know, Final Fantasy hasn't exactly been pushing the bar when it comes to sales for that franchise for a long time now. And I do feel like with Final Fantasy 17, Square Enix is really gonna have to go back to the drawing board and figure out what they want to do with Final Fantasy going forward, whether it's the story, the setting, the battle system. This to me is where they have to get extremely creative and come up with something brand new that makes people have that aha moment around Final Fantasy all over again. But at least for me, I mean, I'm locked in for the third one. I've gone through Rebirth and I want to see how this whole thing concludes. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day. We'll start with this one here. This is posted up by Lemon Lime, who says Ubisoft really can't get in the press for anything good, can they? Well, I, right now, kind of not, but I feel like with their Ubisoft Forward event, if they, say, show up with their new Assassin's Creed game that is going to be in Japan, people have been calling for uh, this version of Assassin's Creed for a long time now, it's finally happening. If a if Splinter Cell Remake is there in some way, maybe they even show Prince of Persia Remake, just like, hey, here's what it's going to look like, we just want to put your minds at ease with that. I feel like then they could have a show that would put them more in the side of, okay, this is exciting stuff from Ubisoft. Whereas right now, a lot of people are fighting over digital ownership and Star Wars Outlaws, that whole thing. So I, I do think after Ubisoft Forward, there will be a bit more interest and excitement around what Ubisoft has coming up over the next year or so. And then we'll go to a comment from the members video. This was posted up by Ruckus, who says, made a dumb mistake a few years ago and bought a copy of Breath of the Wild off one of those CD key websites. Tenet was able to restrict access to all of the digital games I bought. It took about two months to get the situation sorted out. Not something I thought was possible at the time. You'd think once something is purchased and downloaded onto your system memory, it's safe, but I guess that's not the case. Yeah, technically it's still tied to your account. So, if something happens, and look, I, I know back in the day, 360, Call of Duty, people get banned because they, they would they would go crazy online and say all kinds of stuff, and it, it was a whole thing there, to get, get reported, and they get banned. Technically, your physical games would still work, but if it's all digital and tied to your account, that's it. You could have thousands of dollars worth of purchases, and they're just gone because your account has just been completely banned and wiped off the, basically the face of Xbox Live, Nintendo Online, PlayStation, network and that's just more control like I mentioned with the publisher or it could be this you bought a sketchy CD key to save some money and it turns out they did not get that key through the proper means we'll say it's very common <laughs> with some of these websites so I gotta be careful with them uh, and Nintendo flag the purchase or the key entry and boom you're banned from using your digital games for a few months until they find the time to get it sorted out all digital future. Can't wait. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's Nintendo's third-party relations going into next generation? Is there a game out there now or coming up at some point that would make you go, wow, if it got shown at, uh, at a Nintendo Direct with Nintendo's next system? And then also, what about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? With some of the information going around about sales being bit soft do you think this is something square can maybe turn around with a pc release sales or a playstation plus entry down the line especially with the third one coming up here in apparently three years thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time